this too he tracked along the hidden stream and traced his acts to a miraculous power this too why it is glowing why it is happening this light shining here he is tracking he is tracing the entire course of events here say, along the hidden stream the stream don't see it. the evolutionary path the growth path you don't see it all is completely but then he is now tracking back in words actually trace its acts to a miraculous found found source where from it has come so he is rather swimming upstream ashwapati is swimming upstream to find its source he is going upstream to find its source here you see now what is stream upstream from in consciousness is going back to the super conscious state and from there he sees all the thing that is the actual source of all this happening here you see this too he tracked along this hidden stream the path of evolution the process of evolution the sequence of things happening they are not known to us but they are now seen like a phosphorescence you have shown black light on it and then they are revealing themselves completely here you see, you see. this too he tracked along the hidden stream and trace its acts to a miraculous power really is a miracle that things have started happening there was absolutely nothing in matter and matter is now showing all these things there is really a miracle a great miracle great happening but then what is the cause of that thing what is the purpose what is the source what is the driving force behind it that he is tracing back to the found up there you see the mystic what is the found what is the source the mystic presence that is the source of all these things a mystic presence none can prove nor rule that is entirely and approachable to us a mystic presence the divine himself the divine himself he received more more descriptively the aspect of sachidananda himself mystic presence of sachidananda himself as a single person sachidananda you see has all the three aspects sat chit anand sat is being or existence consciousness force is movement and please the joy of doing things the will to do things the joy of doing things now sat without chit and ananda just sat by itself that is pure existence pure reason is a stable thing without any movement when consciousness force starts working along with that then it becomes something different it starts moving sat starts moving in the joy of creation and the creation then begins with supramental power super mind so basically satchit ananda sat is the base adhar stability foundation chit shakti consciousness force is a driving force the moment comes with chit shakti when chit shakti acts upon matter stability that is existent and then at that stage when super mind starts becoming a creator you have a cosmic manifestation the cosmic manifestation is the work of super mind he is the creator cosmic manifestation is the work of super mind satchit on the basis of that thing in ananda and when the cosmic works begin that begins with super mind you see super mind is the creator in a sense you see the foundation the basic driving force is coming from satchit of course this is our way of understanding but in reality they are simultaneously one together satchit and is one single entity it may work this way or that a poison with their same a mystic presence that is the mystic presence of that thing he is tracing it back all the way up to such zanand mystic presence creator all this game of ray and shade in the sweet and bitter paradoxical life yeah for us it looks a paradoxical life but for the spirit up there there is no paradox at all you see paradoxical life as from the body the soul's intimacy 
and by the swift vibration of a nerve links its mechanic throbs to light and love so he is tracing back to the source they found he is swimming up nowhere up miraculous found and what do you see a mystic presence and there he links the mechanic throbs to light and love all these movements which are kind of mechanical to us he links them to light and love you see it summon the spirit sleeping memory it that presence which is sleeping there it summon the spirit sleeping memory sleeping sleep spirit has taken a plunge into the inconscious into the void and it is sleeping there but it is still carrying the memories of what it was where from it has come see, that does he does not lose the memory it summon the spirit sleeping memory so all this found which is there he is source from which he has to go he is tracing it back and there he summon the memory up from the subconscious depths beneath times of foam oblivious of the flame of happy truth they are not aware of the flame of happy truth themselves you see arriving with heavy eyes that hardly see they come disguised as feelings and desire who oh, sleeping memories sleeping memories they come disguised as feelings and desire like waves upon the surface floats a while this float a while for while and rise and sing in a somnambulist again sing back into sleep into somnambulist time see so he is seeing now all this is happening and uh, 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 lapsing back into the thing impure degraded though her motions are her life her motions are always a heaven to broods in life city because there is that mystic presence because that there is that mystic presence you see that mystic presence is there therefore impure degraded though her motions are that is what we see today here always a heaven to broods in life city in the depths of life in our obscure members burn that fire in our obscure members burn that fire really we are not aware of it oh divine agni <laughs> in our obscure members burn that fire in our obscure members So in our obscure, I am a member, burns the fire. Perfectly, I am inclined to a touch of God's rapture in creation's acts. That is what he sees now. After all, this bliss, such an endless bliss, part of it is there. A touch of God's rapture. So even while an insect is crawling or a serpent is moving, or there is a kind of a rapture of that. You see, a lost remembrance of felicity. yeah it has come from that ananda world loka ananda loka and it has kind of recovered that memory last remembrance of felicity lurks still in the dumb roots of death and birth it's a great line you see in our process of death and birth there is that ananda that there is that rapture there is that memory that is why all these things are happening death and birth would not have been there without that ananda that rapture remember us felicity is there that is the beauty of it you see we are not aware of it that's a different matter but then death and birth they have their origin up there in that thing the world's senseless beauty mirrors god's delight so this is the him of ananda him of felicity him of joy a touch of god's rapture creations act a lost remembrance of felicity no still in the dumb roots of death and birth the world senseless beauty mirror god she has used all the rapture is there felicity is there delight is there that is him of ananda you see the 
Ananda Sukta, which you can see. A touch of gas rapture. This is a touch only. You see why an ant is moving or why a serpent is moving or why a rat is hiding in a hole. You see, there is a kind of a rapture of life in the whole thing, you see. A touch of gas rapture in creation and a lost remembrance of felicity. Now, if you recover that original felicity, you'll be totally different. You'll get mad. <laughs> you'll not be able to bear it, you see, its presence, you see. Last remembrance of his love still in the dumb rules of death and burn. That rapture smile is secret everywhere. Where is not present? Where is that Ananda not present? Secret smile is there. Whether it is a stone or a rock or a mountain or a stream or a flower or a tree or an ant or a giraffe or a dinosaur. See, that rapture is there everywhere. Gods, angels, fairies, whatever you want to call them. The rapture is there, of course. That rapture smile is secret everywhere. Really, the Ananda Sukta, you see. It flows in the winds, the breath, in the trees, the sap. Its huge, magnificent blooms and leaves and flowers. How lyrical, you know, the whole description is so lyrical, you see. It flows in the winds, the breath. That rapture, the smile flows in the wind. And the trees, the sap, the trees climbing up, and the sap, the trees. It's huge, magnificent bloom in leaves and flowers. So that is why, even when an ant is moving or a rapture, see, Mother describes in the evening how the sap rises in the tree from bottom, and she experiences the peace experienced by the plant there at that time. You see. That rapture smile is secret everywhere. Now that is you know, that we don't really understand, we don't understand, we appreciate this. Because we don't identify ourselves with the wind, with the tree, with the tree, with the leaf, with the flower. We don't identify ourselves, we don't feel that rapture at all. <coughs> when life broke through, it's half drowsed in the plant. Yeah. You see, from life in matter, through rising serpent pool, he's coming to the plant. Half drowned in the plant that feels and suffers but cannot move or cry. Plant feels and suffers but cannot move or cry. You see. In bees and in wind bird and thinking man, it made all the harsh rhythm, its music's beat, a smile, the secret smile, the rapture smile. Beat. It forced the unconscious tissues to awake. Unconscious tissue to awake. That is a rapture smile. See, it is because of that, Ananda. It is forcing the tissue to awake and ask for happiness and earn the pang and thrill with pleasure and laughter of brief delight. Well, brief delight, obviously, because you are in that world, you see. And quiver with pain and crave for ecstasy. That a very lyrical description, you see, at once, you see. Very lyrical. <laughs> when life broke through, see, life has appeared now. Now it is that life is breaking through. Life was actually present. Life was embedded in matter. You see, in conscience is a storehouse of all the sleeping potencies of matter, of life, of mind, and the higher powers of the spirit. It is the storehouse of all these things locked in it, embedded in them. They are not coming out. Now, when life has entered into matter, it is that life which was embedded in the unconscious. It is breaking up. The entry of life from above has woken up the life which is sleeping in the unconscious. The fields and suffers but cannot move or cry in beast and wind bird and thinking man. It made of the harsh rhythm is music's beat. Harsh rhythm is you can use his beat. Joy is happy thing. It folds the unconscious tissues to awake and ask for happiness and earn the pang. Yeah. <coughs> earn the pang earn the pang. That is self necessary. Because that moment is required. It may mean 
suffering, pain, but that is an aspect of rapture of joy. That is also an aspect of rapture and joy. <coughs> and ask for happiness and earn the pain, earn the pain. See, happiness, the earning of happiness is a pain. You earn bank and thrill with pleasure and laughter of brief delight and quiver. As I was telling you, when you are living, you are earning death. You are earning death because it is that death that earning, you are acquiring death, earning. It is that which will make you grow further make you progress further. That pang is there which will bring more delight, higher delight, a greater delight constantly sees you. <coughs> and thrill with pleasure and laughter and brief delight and quiver with pain and crave for ecstasy. See, this is a great improvement, great change which has taken place in life itself. Matter for dull, without any movement, without any action, without any sense, without any perception at all, completely in the absence of life. Now life in her own world, in her own domain is nothing but a continuous, ceaseless activity, action, movement, without any break at all, completely anywhere, you see. Unbroken, life was a joy an unbroken joy. In the world of bliss, life was an unbroken joy, continuous joy, joy. No question of pain, no question of suffering, no question of uh, difficulty, sorrow, nothing. She was absolutely only in the world of bliss. Continuous joy. Now, it is that continuous joy which gets broken the moment life enters into matter. That continuous joy of life which is there, that gets broken, then you have got pain and joy, happiness and pain, suffering, sorrow, suffering. Now that happens, that in fact that breaking of continuity of joy in the world of life alone is not a very desirable thing when things have to grow. Because you always have joy, you are not really going there, you get stuck with that. In order to grow, it is necessary to break it. And in that way, the entry of life in matter has initiated the process of growth of life itself. The process of growth of life has begun with the entry of life in matter. Otherwise, life was not growing. It was happy all the way. Same, same, same everywhere. Joyous is complete. But if life has to grow, has to bring more activities of spirit into action, then it has to break. And therefore, the entry of life in matter is not only a gain for matter, but is also a gain for life. Life is getting, see I got life, death, life, death, life is getting broken. It is necessary for a certain process of growth, you see. It has to be joy and there is suffering. It is that suffering and joy, that cycle will make grow more and more of joy, you see. 